everyone. Today, during our New York Dance and Arts Innovation Quarantine Talks, we have a jury member of the last uh, New Vision International uh, Composition Competition for the horn solo, uh, Dr. Jacek Muzyk, the wonderful horn player who has a lot of experience playing with many great orchestras in Poland, but also in Europe. We, we know wonderful recordings of Christian Zimmermann's of the piano concertos and the horn solos in the second a uh, very famous second uh, piano concert of minor are, were played by Jacek Muzyk. And now all, he's also a teacher, he's teaching one um, horn in, at the Eastman uh, School of Music and also in Buffalo and he's also the um, uh, horn player for the orchestra. And we would like to talk also about the current situation, about the education and also about the music for the horn. First of all, Jacek, thank you very much for being with us and thank you for uh, taking this invitation. Thank you for having me over. Hello. Hello. How is the weather today in Buffalo? Five inches of snow. Brand new, fresh, white snow. There is snow. That's why I was curious if you have snowed. So you do. You do. I, I could almost say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh. That's exactly like December. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really unusual. Unexpectable. Yep. Yes, so Jacek, tell me, uh, first I would like to ask you about your recent year during this quarantine times, maybe about the orchestra that you are playing, Buffalo Symphony Orchestra. So how was the orchestra? Did you have concerts online? How was the situation there, if you briefly can tell us? It was um, easy and very difficult at the same time. Mm -hmm. easy, according to the schedule, we mostly, we played chamber music or pieces, um, arranged for two horns, one horn, three horns sometimes, very rarely. Three horns. Mm -hmm. Not much work. And it's really difficult to find desire to practice. That's in this aspect was very difficult, but we survived. And recently we're opening the concerts for the public. We have only um, around 100 people. Because so when do you know the date? Maybe can you tell us when will be the opening, reopening of the orchestra? We we actually already played two concerts for for, for the public, but only hundred people, around oh, hundred people, okay. and mostly sponsors and donors and special for special invitation. So it's not. I would say it's not open for the public yet. We yeah, expect, yeah. like everybody, probably start normal regular season in September. For now, I would say Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra is still very careful. And before we get tested twice a week, so before the first rehearsal and uh, another test on Thursday, we get a self test and we take it home. Mm, in this way. <laughs> So, yeah, we are very, very careful, and, and that's how we function. Yes, but of course, I remember we met at the German Buffalo a few years ago, because also the orchestra, the Buffalo Orchestra played modern music. But last year, the German Buffalo probably was cancer, right? Or it didn't happen, right, in 2020? Yes, it was cancer, yes. But this year, it's going to happen, and we will perform uh, one of the pieces of Felder, Mm -hmm, yes. I think the title is, I think, Canzona for Brass, something like that. It's just for, so for, for brass. brass instruments. Oh, that's good. Okay, but so it's getting better and better. It's good to hear. But how about the situation? Maybe second question, Jacek, as a teacher, as a horn teacher, uh, also at the Buffalo University and uh, the Eastman School of Music. Are you teaching in person or you still uh, or you do online? How is it? How is it there? In person mm -hmm. at UD, at the University of Buffalo. And I teach online in Eastman. Kind of interesting, I would say, to teach online, because I think that the most important thing about horn is sound. Mm -hmm. So it, sometimes it's difficult to, you know, to find details in the sound if someone has not perfect equipment for presenting the sound and the music online. So. Mm -hmm. It's okay, I would say, but I cannot wait to to return to normal. In-person class. Tell me, uh, Jacek, also I want to ask you now about education, about the um, repertoire for the horn. 
about the situation for the new music also, how about your students? Uh, do they also play like some other music or maybe you studied at Juilliard, right? You studied Rice, many universities in the States. But how is also your, because you performed Penderecki this uh, horn concert a few years ago, that professor wrote Inter Reise. And how is the situation with the uh, new music, maybe at Eastman and Buffalo? Can you say a few words? We do not play too much uh, contemporary modern music. Modern contemporary music. music. Mm -hmm. But in Eastman School of Music, I would say they play a lot. Mm -hmm. Really a lot of modern music. So I think in this department, they are they're amazing. Like it's really sometimes it's I I have a desire to listen to something Mozart something classical something mm -hmm. something I wouldn't say beautiful because then I would say that contemporary music cannot be beautiful but some, something I grew up with mm -hmm. like mm, we still I mean Mozart Beethoven Haydn Brahms that's something we I, I keep it in my heart and I listen to it every day. I don't see a good future for many of um, modern uh, uh, contemporary composition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Many of the pieces I played or um, I heard, they probably performed once, maybe twice in their lives and uh, on some festivals, on some special occasions. But there are not so many pieces like Penderecki's Concerto, which I think it will be performed widely and very often in the entire world because it's just well-written, very beautiful, very nice piece. It's interesting, it's beautiful, well-written. What else can you have? That's right. And it's not so long. I remember this concerto is actually pretty short, right? As for concerto, this whole concerto is like less than 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a regular size of concert. Regular size. Between 15 and 20 minutes. I just don't remember exactly the, the, the time. Oh, it's an interesting story because I, before I played this concerto here in Buffalo with the orchestra, mm -hmm. uh, I had a few lectures about his music. Mm -hmm. And so I Googled that, that title and I was trying to figure out where why why is the title what's the explanation for the title so finally i i'm sitting in his house and i'm talking to him and asking so mr penderecki i i was searching the the, the website the the web and internet and looking for for the uh, source of the title and so some sources are saying that you were traveling to China. Some some sources are saying that as a little kid you were hunting with your uncle. Some other sources saying some different things. Do you remember why you untitled this piece like that? And he's looking at me and says, you know, just like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes people create big philosophies to big, big compositions, and they just do just like that. But I mean, Jacek, I, as an Eastman uh, teacher, you said that you have a lot of composers writing new music, but you, do you mean also music for the solo horn or, or the, in the ensemble? Because there is a great ensemble, uh, contemporary ensemble at Eastman. So do you, uh, how about the solo pieces for horn? So many right mm -hmm. now that, and Plenty of them are just similar. That when students play for me, I, it's I don't recognize the names. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say that. And not, not unique, very unique. No. And I would say most of them I quickly forget. So I guess I don't see big future for some of them. But they try. You know, they as I as I mentioned, these pieces are they try to use all the techniques of the horn. Uh, entire range, different effects. So at the end, you say, well, it's well written and it's interesting. Can you say it's beautiful? Sometimes you can, but not so often. Mm -hmm. And see. they're very, what, what bothers me, very often they're very complicated. Mm -hmm. And actually that discourages people to, to play it and to practice it because 
the rhythms are so complicated. Like you need some, you need ex to be extra good in this department. And I don't think it's so important if you to mm -hmm. for, for the composition to be so complicated. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you know, Jacek, like, it's different when you write for the solo music and the, like the horn in the orchestra, right? So I think that's why composers are trying to make go very complex with this because it's just one instrument, you know, one just one instrument. So there is no like uh, elder support. So I, that's why different composers may be trying to find their different ways how to make it interesting. But the, it's, the horn itself has a beautiful sound itself by itself, you know. And but I'm always very curious because actually also, that's also why we made this competition. And I was thinking very much for them for the brass instruments because brass instruments um, instruments are not so well. Um, welcomed by the contemporary composers. Not so many write to write for the brass instruments. A lot of, of course, writing for the strings. And I was also thinking, I was very curious how many people uh, also would apply, what's the composition. We got um, submissions uh, to the composition competitions, but horn was, saxophone was the most popular. And horn wasn't that, horn wasn't that uh, popular from all of those uh, wind instruments we had. You know, and I always was thinking, is this really that difficult instrument to write for the solo music? Do you think it's maybe one of the most difficult for the brass instrument? Because we have a lot of pieces for trombones, we have, but for horn, less, much less. Well, that's what people say, that horn is very challenging, it's very challenging. difficult mm -hmm. Maybe that's, and Maybe that's why composers are afraid to write for this instrument, because the, the, the mistakes we make that are very spectacular. <laughs> and uh, they go into safer instruments, safer. I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay. That my understanding. Mm -hmm. Question. When did you decide that you prefer to, you want to choose the horn as your main instrument? And was it your first instrument or maybe the second instrument? So do you remember that? Yeah, I, will ne I would say I would never forget. Of this. course. <laughs> <laughs> because when, when I was six, I started playing piano. And the piano was the first instrument, okay. Yeah, but interestingly, I didn't want to play piano. I, want, I wanted to play guitar. So I bugged my mom, mom, just please enroll me to music school. I want to play guitar. So she brought me to a music school and they checked my hearing and... Their idea was, okay, he will be a pianist. Mm -hmm. All right. So I started playing piano, but with not much love, I would say, because it wasn't my instrument. Uh, my instrument was guitar. So I played for years, like almost 10 years, I played piano. And then I was introduced to jazz music. Mm -hmm. And when I started playing jazz on piano, I understood that now I can be a pianist, but jazz pianist. So my teacher, classical teacher, learned that I'm playing jazz. And of course, you know, the technique of my uh, left and right hands was, wasn't perfect, especially left hand, because you know, jazz, mostly left hand, serves, played chords and, and accompaniment, and right hand, it's, basically uh, virtuoso and brilliant. So she noticed that and she said, if I, if I catch you again playing jazz, you will you'll be fired. I change your instrument. So I said, all right. And of course I didn't quit because I love jazz and she learned about it. And once I'm coming to my lesson and she says, all right, as I promised, you're fired. No piano anymore. Choose other instruments. Your new instrument will be trombone or French horn. That's the instruments they needed in a music school to, mm -hmm. to fill up the, the orchestra. So she says, so what do you choose? I say, trombone. She said, it's going to be punishment, so you'll be a horn player. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. And I was then 18. So very late for horn players, very late for a musician to start a new instrument. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I can play horn because 
I'm not going to be a horn player, not a chance. I'd be just pianist. But I played for two, three years. And what I figure out that being a jazz pianist, it's not only music, it's also a style of life. And that style of life was not something I wanted to go into. You know, just clubs, traveling, being relaxed all the time, going to bed at 3, 4, 5 a.m. No. Then on the other side, I had beautiful concert uniform, like tails and nice stages, orchestra. And, and then I said, okay, probably I should go toward being horn player. And then I started playing horn, and then, then I liked it more and more. And here I am. Did you have your favorite piece for horn at that time? Yeah, at that time, my favorite piece was Beethoven Sonata. Because that was, oh. I, I couldn't play. It was beautiful. That was actually my first piece I, I listened to. Because I wasn't interested in before. Uh, I wasn't interested in horn at all. Then I got from someone, I got uh, a LP. I played it in my house and it was Beethoven Sonata and Brahms Trio. And I said, mm -hmm. wow, it's really beautiful. I need to play like that. That's what's my... That, That's a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that, Jacek. Yeah. But you know, also later you played with many orchestras. And I also want to ask you about your experience because you work with many in European orchestras in Poland, yes, with the National Orchestra in Krakow, but in the States. And how do you, can you compare? Uh, how do you feel? Can you compare maybe this? Because different cultures, right? How do you feel playing in the American orchestra and how in, in the European orchestra? Maybe what's different? Maybe what's similar? You know? I think that after you know so many years playing here and there because mm -hmm. i have to say i play i play in good european orchestras but right. i also played here i played in los angeles i played in chicago pittsburgh uh, some um, st paul st louis mm, so many orchestras yeah. houston symphony dallas symphony yeah among others and i would say the difference it's a it's, a, it's actually a very wide subject because the, the way we educate people, educate musicians, educate horn players in Europe and here, it's, it's different. We, I remember when I, was, when I started playing instruments, the most important was always music. So I could play on my horn, I could play a few notes, but I was fantasizing playing, you know, the most difficult concerto. I was faking, and that was terrible, probably, I mean, from a technical point of view. But I was trying to be a musician. I was trying to be creative, and that was the beauty was in, the most important for me. Here, it's a little different. I mean, the very important it's like technical base. It's sound, rhythm, everything needs to be solid. You cannot miss notes. And I wouldn't say that music is in first place very often. They said, okay, once we do, once you, you can move around the horn very well, when you're a good instrumentalist, then we put a little more weight on music. So, I would say plenty of musicians, plenty of horn players I met here, mm -hmm. they're very solid, they're very excellent, they're rhythmically perfect, they don't miss notes. But sometimes I would expect more creativity, I would expect more artistry from them, and, but you can, maybe you can have everything. But Jacek, I have also a question, uh, but me as a composer, as a musician, listening to the European orchestras, I sometimes feel they have more rubatos. I don't know how to explain this, but the tempo is more flowing. And I would say, and do you feel the difference maybe that the issue of the tempo marking is maybe in the States uh, diff has different approach than a European thinking about orchestra, no? 
yeah, that's you, you hit the point. Yes, that's right. That's what I feel, you know. Important for all the people feel the same. So if all the musicians have the same feeling, the same style, the oh, same okay. thinking, the same education, they feel the same way and they play together. And nobody cares if it's 16, 30 seconds. Who cares? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, I don't say it's wrong or right. Again, I say it's different. I strongly disagree with this. Whatever works to, to mm, get goosebumps from you, it's beautiful. To make you say, ah, oh, it was so beautiful. That's the most important, right? Impression. Music is impression. It's, it's some kind of experiencing something extra beautiful. So you cannot be like, in, like a technician. It has to be like that. And this is only right. If it's 16, it's 16. If, it's, if it doesn't say rubato, you don't, say, you don't do rubato. If there's a tempo 92, it has to be 92 throughout the piece. One more thing. I had a lesson with, with one of the biggest horn players in this country. And you say, okay, play Mozart. I play Mozart three. Which which piece? Because we listened today of some of your Mozart. Which which piece did you play? Uh, that was Mozart three. So huh? he... Okay, I can present. All right. Oh, I have horn with you. That's great. So I. There are no dots, but I'm playing dots. Okay, staccato. Yeah, staccato. There, there, one. I mean, sometimes the the quarter notes are. Sometimes there are. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing like that, and I think I'm pl I'm doing a really good job. I'm happy with what I hear, and I see this face. No, you mix up the styles. You have a quarter note here, and you have quarter note here. And once you play staccato, once you play um, sostenuto, cannot be like that. And he goes, Bob. Everything the same. Okay, sorry. I think it's just boring and appropriate. You know, music is like a language when you have good articulation, when you change it, right? But you know, in the mu music of ba uh, Bach, Jacek, we don't have articulation, but it's so many differences always. Um, great performers are changing a lot of articulation because the speech has different articulation of the words. So, you know, sometimes I feel maybe composers don't notate that so precisely also about the tempos. But you know, this is always like a interpretation, you know, so, you know. And again, I mean, like, we're talking about horn, we're talking about Mozart. And as we know, Mozart, he had this wonderful soloist, Lloyd Gap, and all the concerts Mozart wrote for him. So he just gave him just a note and say, all right, do whatever you want. And then exactly. you know, you see. Yeah. different editions have slurs here mm, and there. Yes. But Lloyd Gap was free. He was doing whatever he wanted. And I think that that's the composers should serve the music. Just leave it up, up to the soloist. Maybe if you listen to Lament. Oh, this piece. Oh, that piece. That's actually the recent piece that won our competition. Uh, this one. Oh yes, that this one. Yes. Yeah, I, I was, I hopefully the composer did not mind, but I did some changes. Like first of all, the, the beginning. I took the the mm, dancing character. I. Mm -hmm took here more time and almost some fermatas here and there. And that's 
that's how I see my role as a soloist in performing pieces like that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, trapped in, in a cage and you have to play like that. It's tempo, it's 58, you need to play 58. No, it's a suggested tempo, I understand. And, you know, some trills, you know, trills can be lip trills or finger trills. And in some ranges of the horn, the trills cannot be so beautiful because, mm, because of the range of the horn. So I changed trills to more dense to perum. And so hopefully he doesn't mind. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> how I see this piece. I, this is your I, personal interpretation of the very personal yeah. and very, yes. And I think if you write for if compositions for any instrument, you leave plenty of room to a soloist to perform. That's, they can make it really even more interesting than the piece itself. Mm -hmm. So when I, you mentioned Bach, when I listened to Bach cello suites, and I don't know if you know, I, I recorded Bach cello suites. But for horn. <laughs> yes. One, yes, two, yes, yes. I saw, I saw. <laughs> three suites. And, but before, I listened probably to, I'm not sure before or after, but I listened to plenty of different recordings of the cello players. And I see the var variety of, of concepts, ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really wide range of work, what they're doing. Tempo-wise and- That's right, that's right, of course, yeah. yeah it, it, interpretation and uh, articulation, everybody it feels free to perform it i'm not sure if Bach wanted like that but i'm sure if he listened to us would say wow wow i like it and i like this and like this wow what you can do with my music it's incredible mm -hmm. but the question is yes here if the composer they write music they always write interpretation because the question is if the composer are in interpreters of their music not always they are writing the music and there are so many ways of the interpretation that even can be better than they could imagine, you know. So not always composer is the best interpreter of their music, you know, because they are thinking about the structure, about music, everything, but later when they leave freedom, you know, uh, of course there are two kinds of composers. So there are some composers which can leave like 20% freedom in the notation, even the others contemporary music like even maybe five, 10%. But you know, this is something like the composer always have to deal with um, about the interpretation of the work. And it's always good, the best I even think, because I have the Chopin competition uh, festival. And I'm thinking Chopin was leaving a lot of actually this kind of freedom. That's why we have so many ways of interpretations. And uh, this is the most beautiful, I think, I don't know if you agree with me, when the music has infinity possibilities of interpretation, you know, that's the most beautiful. One has maybe few possibilities, it's not so interesting, you know, because it's not alive, you know. So this kind of freedom is very creative, very creative, you know. Yeah, I think uh, and we need it as, as soloists. As soloists, we need it because sometimes, as you mentioned, the composers, they have some ideas mm -hmm. about their music and it should be performed exactly to, like they want to please them. Exactly. It's not always to please the, the, the audience, to please the listeners. To please them, to do exactly what I wanted to, what I wrote in the music, you need to do like that, because then I'd be happy. Uh, yeah, that's another, you know. That's another way. Yes, but you work, but you work with Professor Panderski, and the person was very minded. Professor Panderski was very minded, uh, open minded for this, right? He was living yeah. freedom. He was living freedom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was a very cool. Guy. Yeah. I mean, a very, a very good composer and. Yeah, he left plenty of room for yes, for yes, performance yes. to to make his music beautiful. He he didn't care too much about oh, it has to be exactly like I wrote. Uh, you recorded also so many classical music, and if you can tell us maybe some names just for the us that were very influential for you horn players in that you like to listen and you respect them. Maybe not maybe not maybe not alive. But more of the history of the horn, there's some players that you would like us to listen, recommend as a wonderful masters of these instruments. Um, uh, certainly the, the ones I 
grew up with. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest artist, it's Peter, uh, it's Hermann Baumann. Baumann. Hermann Baumann is German, he's still alive, German horn player. Mm -hmm. He's just singing through horn. He's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful player. Also, Peter Damm, mm -hmm. he's from East Germany. Also, very interesting, it's Czech and Hungarian playing. It's beautiful. They don't care that much about um, maybe sound and rhythm and everything what's here is so important. But they sing through horn. Like when you listen to it, that's the way you want to sing. And that's, I think, is very important because we want to play instruments exactly like we sing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say Zdenek Tirislar is a Czech, um, a Czech horn player. Okay. Right now, it's Radovan Vladkovic. He's okay. about the most famous horn player. Right. Professor Bedereski was collaborating with him. Yes. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. Croatian. Um, yeah, that's that's the f names which come to my. That's in, great. In this country, I would mention William Vermeulen. Mm -hmm. He cares about music a lot. That's what what I like, because there are plenty of horn players who cares only about being a good instrumentalist. I am not with them here. Yeah, okay. Horn needs to serve the music. It's not enough to be excellent, excellent horn player. Nope. There's one step up, it's music. Like for every instrument, not only the horn, every instrument should be like this, you know, there is no exception, you know. Yeah, but people <laughs> just end on this level being excellent instrumentalists and they think that's it. Mm. Right. No. Nope. Yes. But the last question, Jacek, for you. How many horns do you have? <laughs> I have plenty of horns, yeah. A lot Some. of horns you have, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just here I have two. You have two, right? <laughs> yes, and that's also a question. Why do you have so many? Do you prefer to choose different horns for the different piece? Or because we had the tradition of the different tunics, right? But the, of course it was E flat, corns, later we change it, right? But during the even Beethoven because uh, you could retune the horns. But tell me, how do you choose the horns for the pieces and why do you have so many? That's also a very interesting question. Uh, why do I have so many? I just like them. You... That's <laughs> Different horns have different sound. Mm -hmm. Like if you, you have large bore horns, the sound is dark and big. If you have very old horns, like this one. Right, the old one, yes. And very old, but it's made of the alloy still from the time the alloys were really good. Like, mm -hmm. have, you know, the, the um, modern horns, the, the horns they make now, they cannot use the alloys which were, um, the quality of alloys, it's not as good as like 50 years ago or six years ago or even before the Second World War, and I have one horn like that, just beautiful, beautiful sound. And I spoke to a, uh, Berg, which is this, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, maker of this horn, and I asked him, so what is so, why is so difficult to make a beautiful horn if we can, the, the progress in every department of life, it's so big, but in horns, we still can press, I mean, we still can like a horn, 100 year horn more than like. The current metal. one, the current one, yes. And he said the problem is in metal because the Second World War ate the best metals that they used for, for armory. Um, military yeah, purposes, oh, right. oh. Ar army and you know, weapons. 
So we don't have that good allies anymore. Mm, that's the and secret. That's the sound, right? If you have good metal. The secret and the sound. No. Responsive, then you, have, you can make beautiful horn. Mm -hmm. If you have what you have, then, then you cannot make anything better than a hundred years ago. That's right. You know, I say we at the end of our conversation, we're going to listen the Mozart horn concerto number three, E flat major. But tell us on which horn did you play this piece? Do you remember? Uh, I played on this horn. On this one, okay. Yeah. That's Keith Berg, excellent mm -hmm. horn mm -hmm. maker. Conversation. We'll listen the first movement, okay, from this E flat uh, major horn concerto number three by Mozart. And we'll hear those things what you discuss about articulations, about the changes. People can hear that. Excellent. So yeah, yeah so thank you very much for this conversation, for sharing with all of us about the horn, also about the situation in Buffalo. I wish you maybe you can have more snow that you can play uh, with the snowman outside, you know, <laughs> this time then. Thank you for nice wishes, okay? And maybe <laughs> invite you here to, to yeah. put, make yeah, a no. snowman. And, and winter yeah. rise you're going to have in spring, you know. <laughs> yep. Yes, That's yes, great. yes. Okay. So thank you very much for the jury. Thank you for performing this lament piece that we will hear on the YouTube. And uh, thank you for everything, yes. Have a great day. All the best for you. Thank you once more time. Thank now you. Now time for Mozart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Thank you. 